We talked about uncertainties, we talked about errors in our experiment. In this lesson, we will look at different types of errors. How do we classify these errors? I, when I think of an experiment, I like to break the experiment into three pieces where errors could happen. So we're going to think of yourself doing an experiment and taking down a measurement. We have yourself, okay? You have a you have a device that is going to measure something, and you have your apparatus, which is what you're trying to measure. There are three places where errors can occur. It can occur between you and the measuring instrument in itself. Number one, errors can occur with your instrument of measurement. So for example, your instrument not being precise or properly calibrated. And last but not least, errors that are associated with your setup, your equipment setup. Three places where these errors can occur. But more precisely, we categorize our errors into systematic and random errors. Systematic errors come from flaws in the experimental design or the equipment that cause your data set to deviate away from the true value or values. These errors cannot be reduced by simply repeating your experiment several times unless you change the design of your experiment or you do something with the equipment. This might strike, strike a bell and uh, you might be recalling that lesson on accuracy and precision and yes you are bang on systematic errors cause you to be less accurate which means decreasing systematic error helps you improve accuracy let's take a look at a few examples we have instrument calibration so for example you are trying to ma measure the mass of something and Instead, you want to put your mass inside a beaker, but then you forgot to tear your beaker. You forgot to tear the instrument. That means all your mass readings are going to contain the mass of the beaker as well, which means your instrument was not properly calibrated. One example. Another example is energy loss due to friction. For example, let's say you are measuring the acceleration of a block going down a ramp, and you did not consider friction. So friction is between the, your block and the ramp. You did not consider friction. Well, that means energy is going to be lost from your system, which means the acceleration that you calculate may or may not be so accurate from your ideal situation. Another example is your heat loss due to environment. So let's say, for example, you are doing a calorimetry lab. You are measuring something you're measuring a property of a material that you suspend in 100 degrees Celsius of water with a thermometer and you forgot to cover your lid well that'd be poor that would be poor experimental experimental design but let's say your lid was faulty or your equipment was not very well chosen you have this heat loss which means not all of this heat is going to transfer into your material, causing there to be a discrepancy in your results. These errors will decrease the accuracy of your results in your, in your lab. What about random errors? Random errors have to do with statistical fluctuations. They have to do with things that are quite outside of our control. Think of when you're collecting data, you get this random distribution of data. Some of the times they follow a pattern called a normal distribution. So something that kind of looks like this. So think of the middle as all your is your average. And then all of these are the fluctuation in your data. Of course, more of your data going, are going to align in the middle, but some of them are going to deviate away. These may be caused due to human imperfections, such as reaction time, as we talked about in our class, random stability in the instability of the environment, equipment, or might have to do with your samples. 
the random error can be reduced by repeating your experiments. And this is what we talked about in our lab when you did four repetitions for every single piece of data. And to make it even better, you timed it for 10 oscillations instead of just for the one. Decreasing random error helps you to improve precision. Helps you to improve in precision. Here are a few examples. Your inability to stop the stopwatch exactly after 10 periods every single time. We talked about this in the lab when we talked about timing. Okay. Your temp another example is temperature fluctuations in the room during a thermal lab. So let's say you're trying to also do a thermal uh, calorimetry lab, for example. Your room temperature might sometimes fluctuate because it might be very cold outside or very hot outside, depending on that. Another example is your mass balance fluctuations in a classroom. Let's say there are drafts in the room, so that causing your readings to go up or down, to fluctuate. These will also count as errors to uh, attribute to random errors. Now, we won't deal with this in physics, but in biology, if you're curious, you might have a big sample, and then you might have a few cells in your sample that are a little bit different than others. A bacteria containing an antibiotic resistant gene, for example. And most of them do not, but you have the random ones that do. These all have to do with random errors that are more or less outside of our control, but over repeated number of experiments, it help us to narrow down our results so that we can see where the middle of our data resides. So hopefully you have a better picture of the difference between random and systematic error and how these uh, attribute to the results of your data. There are many ways to help you reduce random and systematic error, for example, repeated experiments and for random error and in for systematic error, looking back at your experimental design, choosing your equipment properly, etc. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll tune in until next time. Thank you for watching. See you later.